AMD acquires Pensando. Yeah, so company's been on a roll with organic innovation with their PC and data center uh, processors. Doing okay with uh, with GPUs. Made a huge acquisition with Xilinx, uh, better known for FPGA technology, but AMD, I believe, really bought them for their advanced high-performance SOCs that combine ARM cores, uh, FPGAs, uh, discrete uh, accelerators with uh, high-speed HBM uh, interconnects. This acquisition, um, I, it was interesting. I had to really think through this one, but I, I think I had to think long and hard just because I think the message was a little bit muddy, but let me just net this out. This is AWS Nitro for everybody else. And for those of you who might not be aware of what Nitro is, essentially it's a complete disaggregation layer where you can disaggregate different kinds of processors. You can disaggregate networking and you can disaggregate storage. And if you want, you can even disaggregate um, security functions if, if that's what you have on your chips or your, your offload cars. This clearly gets AMD into what we call the IPU or NPU market, squaring up with Marvell, Intel, and uh, NVIDIA. I was struck by how many big name customers uh, Pensando had. They had Azure, IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud, partner with Equinix, HPE Aruba, Dell Tech, NetApp, and, uh, and customers were Goldman Sachs and, and Wells Fargo. Uh, AMD tried to make this about a, a big software uh, announcement, which, by the way, there is software, but there's also very much uh, ASICs and, and cards uh, involved uh, as well. Uh, I can't really comment on the $1.9 billion. I don't know the revenue stream, don't know where they're coming, but quite frankly, with an opportunity like this and everybody going offload, uh, I don't even know how much that matters other than uh, hey, this gets AMD clearly in the uh, networking IPU, NPU offload game. So I, I like this one. Yeah, it's a solid move for AMD. I mean, it's it's a different level of criticality than the Xilinx deal just based upon the established uh, customer base and how that diversified its portfolio. And obviously FPGAs do have a certain amount of momentum right now. Um, but let's look at some numbers here. I mean, the company had raised about $300 million uh, from Lightspeed, from HPE, uh, from, from Qualcomm Ventures. Um, it says it has deployed more than 100,000 of its platforms into production for customers. So to your point, um, it has some very good customers and a, a heavy dose of utilization in the marketplace. Um, so, you know, this is a fast moving acquisition. It's going to get done within probably the next quarter. Um, and Pat, I think what you said that's most critical for the market to understand is, you know, you're seeing what is happening with this disaggregation approach um, furthering uh, to the core, right? You're seeing it done at the infrastructure layer with the cloud players. You mentioned Nitro, a great example uh, or, or with AWS, but this is happening everywhere. Disaggregation, moving around workloads uh, to take certain amounts of uh, re requirements off of the core CPUs. And so Pensando is gonna give AMD a bigger story here. And as AMD looks to expand and win deals, especially in enterprise, um, this is going to help diversify uh, the company's capabilities. So I'm not necessarily sure it's just going to unseat. I mean, Marvell's a, done a terrific job in this space. NVIDIA is always an extremely difficult company to compete with. And of course, you can't rule out AWS um, in terms of how they win through their uh, basically all things IT approach, including homegrown chip making, which has become something that, Pat, by the way, side note, 22%, I believe, of servers by 2030, I think is what I read, could be ARM based upon mostly AWS's prowess in homegrown chip making. I read that about a week ago, a really interesting data point. So it's a big um, number. 
It is a big number, and, and the team over there is doing some really impressive work under Dave Brown. 